Okay, my thoughts on CB's performance serpentine system. Uh, it's got a sand seal. Um, this one works. Thing is, I bought two. And uh, during Christmas, I just got my son an extra one for him. But this one works perfectly. It's perfectly aligned. No problems. I can rev the, you know, what out of it and nothing happens. Everything's perfect. The belt, the belt comes off perfectly straight, perfectly straight. Goes into the pulley, no problems. Into the upper belt, no problems. I have a couple of shims here, a couple of shims on the bottom pulley, and I think I do have a shim on this one. Make it a little further in so it's perfectly centered. No problems. Nothing to gripe about. Now let's go to the blue bug. <sighs> blue bug. Same deal. I've got, um, I think I have a couple of shims. I think I have two shims down here on this pulley and two shims on the upper pulley. On this one, I don't, I'm not running any shims because if this pulley was working the way it should be, it would, it would be perfectly centered. But, you can see it with your own eyes. You can see how this thing is literally that way. So you can see how it's thin, uh, thick and it thins out. Okay, it's going that way. Now, it used to be that it was actually going the other way. But I introduced a little shim right here. You can barely see the shim. It's just a razor blade right here, which made it made the the, the pulley be go from being sideways like this to slightly just over in that direction. Which, anyways, when it was like this, the the plastic would pull that way, would go that way. In other words, this belt was actually opposite, and basically caused the bearing to disassembled itself really it pulled away from the bearing that's inside this plastic went that way so right now it's doing the opposite thing with the blade right there but I'm thinking that it's not just that problem it's also it's got another angle issue <clears throat> oh, man. this belt I think right now it's too far this way in other words this is higher this one lower so it's causing the belt to track this way. <sighs> so I'm thinking if I move this, if I move this blade, yeah, it's right there. This blade right here, if I push and put it over here, that should cause this whole pulley to come this way and have the belt track a little bit more inwards towards the center of the pulley. Okay, now while it's causing this, I'm thinking bad machining. This one's, I think it's, it was machined wrong. Um, you know, we're all human, shit happens, whatever. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blame anybody. Shit happens. I've done shit like this um, on a factory floor. I go, oops, shit happens. <clears throat> Anyways, this hole was made, um, let me see, too far this way. The, the hole on this part was made too far that way because right now, I have zero adjustability on this belt. It's pretty tight. And if I go up, it gets too tight. If I go down, it goes too tight. So basically the only way I can get the belt on is taking off the bearing. And that's the only way I can take it off. I take off this bolt so I can put the belt on and then put it on and that's it. I have zero, I, I can't adjust it. So I'm thinking they screwed up on this part right here. And that's one of my big problems. And then I think they, cut this thing or they surfaced this thing wrong wrong angle somebody wasn't looking at the angle grinder that well and uh, screwed up so I'm trying to fix it by adding that shim or moving that shim so that this belt tracks to the center um, anyways uh, this is what I'm going through um, I just thought I'd make this video so that you guys can uh, troubleshoot your own problems with the, the serpentine system and that should not be plastic.
if this was steel or aluminum, uh, it wouldn't even matter. It wouldn't even matter because that bearing would never pull out. But there you go, plastic. Ew. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and adjust it. So one of the Masamba members did make a comment that what it could be is that this belt might be like stretched on one side. You know, one side is shorter than the other side and now it's causing the off tracking. Here's my problem with that. Um, it's, a good, it's a really good theory. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I've had problems with the other V belts being in that, that way and that's why I kept throwing the belt. But on this case, <clears throat> if I take this blade off, you can see the blade, you can see it. If I take it off, it actually pulls in the other direction. So that rules out it being, you know, uh, stretched out on one side. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and remove this pulley. The only way I can remove it, which is <clears throat> the impact way. <clears throat> Anyways, um, you can tell I used the uh, JB Weld. I said Loctite later uh, a little while ago, but I meant JB Weld. I used JB Weld on the, ins on the innards and put it back together. And I've been driving it uh, this whole week and it's been holding up together really, really good. Um, like I said, I'm not using any shims on the back. As you can tell, no shims. Um, okay, so I'm gonna loosen this guy so I can move the blade. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the blade like over here, go from there to about here. Okay, so I had already marked it and that's my maximum adjustment or zero adjustment, <laughs> if anything, really. Okay, I'm gonna put it right there. I'm gonna tighten it up. And like I said, the only way I'm able to put this on is by having the belt already on and putting the pulley and then oh, pushing it all the way in there. I have to see what I'm doing. I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, it's right there. It's the only way I can get it on because there's zero adjustability on this thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, she's good and tight. Okay, we're gonna move the camera over here to see how it off tracks when I turn that vehicle on. Let me turn on the vehicle. off tracking to the other direction now uh, I'm gonna move it halfway to where I put it all right Crap. if you can see that but it went that way now the belt is going that way now you can really tell right there it's really close to that edge Crap. redo Okay, we're gonna move that again. Yeah. Oh, great. Now I gotta go get my magnet. Okay, my little antenna magnet. I got it from the bottom. See, it's just a blade. Yeah. Okay. Where was I till I was rudely interrupted? Okay. About half a 
what I did. Just right there. Oops, wrong place. All right, now I went ahead and uh, did all that thing. Uh, let's see, let me turn it on, see what happens. Oh, it's better, way better, but it's still, you can tell that it's the, the belt is going this way like that from there so it's it's shooting the belt that way crap redo you know just for kicks i'm gonna put the blade on the opposite side over here eh, i know it's kind of intuitive but maybe that'll do the trick Putting on the belt like this sucks. <laughs> okay. Oh shit. I think I tightened it too much. Maybe. Start it up again. Oh, my God. It's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, it is perfect. It's perfectly centered. Let me move. I'm going to move the phone. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Perfectly centered. Maybe a slight hint of the belt being slightly over there, but we're at 90% improvement. 90% improvement. Okay. I'm going to show you where the where the shim or the razor blade ended up. That was the sweet spot right there. Sweet spot, perfect. Okay, so, uh, you know, it took me a while to figure it out, but it looks like it's a keeper. We'll run the plastic piece of crap. Uh, it should be fine now. Perfectly centered. All right, we'll call this fixed. So that's pretty much the end of that fiasco. Now, what's coming up next on the vid on the uh, on my channel? This motor still runs really good. There's no the rods are not knocking the valve train. Sounds good, except I'm losing oil pressure, massive oil pressure. Uh, I've already messed, messed around with the plunger on this pulley right here and the plunger in the back. 
for the oil pressure. Uh, I've even swapped out those uh, thicker chrome springs from Impy, which supposedly raise up the oil pressure. And I also even installed the mushroom um, oil plunger that supposedly even increases the oil pressure even more. And I only got five pounds. Right now the engine's running when cold at 40 PSI when cold. It should be more like between 50 and 60. Um, it, it all of a sudden, just in one day, it went. It was normal and all of a sudden just started dropping just the oil, my, my oil gauge and, and on the dash just started going like really low. Um, it dropped down to, I think it was 15 pounds. Once I put all the, the other pistons and the stronger MP springs that boost up the oil pressure, I got another five pounds for 20 pounds. But I know there's something really bad because I drained uh, just a, a little bit of the oil just to see what the oil looked like. And it had a lot of uh, metallic sheen to it. The oil was just full of metallic. So something inside just let go and said, I've had it, you drive me like shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what it's for. Anyways, it finally gave out because I, I mean, I literally drive it like I stole it. I mean, this thing sees 6,000 RPMs and I'm, I'm always hitting the rev limiter at 6,000 RPMs every single day, maybe a dozen times a day. You know, it's been running like this for, oh, maybe five, six years. This high performance motor that's 2234 uh, generally don't last that long. 30,000 miles would be about the ballpark. Then you have to do a, a mandatory teardown. So this thing's, you know, it's approaching almost 60,000. So I got double the life out of it. Now, the good thing is I caught the oil pressure problem. Otherwise, I would have definitely grenaded the whole thing. So um, what I do hear, though, I hear the noises coming from here. From this location, I hear like, cling, cling, cling. Something in here let go i'm thinking it might be the double thrust bearings because it's a fk42 cam so it's really rough on the uh on the uh what do you call it on the thrust bearing um so i might have chewed it up and i do have a double thrust bearing um because those kits usually come with just half the bearing being thrust bearing being a thrust bearing but i do have a double thrust bearing but being my experience, I've uh, run other cams. They, it doesn't matter if it's a single or a dual, they go through those thrust cam, uh, thrust bearings really, really quick. Um, I'm lucky I got so many miles out of it. A lot of shits and giggles. I'm gonna take it apart. We're gonna see what's gonna, what's wrong with this thing. So I'll make videos of that and uh, we'll, we'll diagnose this thing together. See what's wrong with this thing. But I, if I had to put my money on it, I would say the double thrust bearing let go. Another thing that I think could go out is the the the, the drive that takes that turns this thing. Maybe it came loose because uh, it sounds like clankety, and it sounds like it's coming from here. So it might be the the thing that came came loose because when I put it together, I didn't like the way it went together. It was snug it wasn't tight it was just snug so maybe that just wore out and it got oh, um, looser and looser i don't know <sighs> but i'm just speculating right now and yes i did put an oil pressure gauge right here i took off my oil light switch and i put an oil pressure gauge right there and i did confirm that this reading is identical to the reading on my dash so yeah she's done okay moving on Okay, what's going on with this motor? ¿Qué está pasando con este motor? Shit. Chupó faros. Ya chupó faros esta madre. Can't put that on YouTube. Delete. Delete.